Oh, wow, it's great to be here. Um, I have, I think, a wonderful story to share and also a question. Uh, the story goes to the law of attraction and what happens around us as a result. I'm a runner, um, a recreational runner, and I love running near home. We live in Carmel, and so I get to run in a place like Asilomar, which you've been to, I think. It's just a beautiful beach. And a few years ago, um, what was happening to me was I'd be running along those roads, and the tourist buses would come through there, usually to get into Pebble Beach. And um, first, they were, seemed to be really courteous of me, and they'd kind of swerve a little bit and make sure that you know, they weren't going to have any problems. And then one of them got a little close, and I started to get a little irritated with buses. And I seemed to then start attracting more and more of those things. <laughs> Until one day, um, I, uh, I, I needed to use a restroom, and I sort of saved it for one that was off of a little public golf course. And there's not a lot of room in there. It's what you call a one-seater. And, and a bus had pulled into this tiny parking lot <laughs> and had commandeered this bathroom. So I was quite upset about that. Um, and the next thing that went through my mind after that was, wait a minute, look back in history, they built the roads for the cars. I'm the, I'm the one who's actually the interloper here. And what I need to do is to let go of my resentment of the buses. And what I need to do is I need to say, uh, you know, is, is to do some, some pivoting about that and talk about the positive aspects of the buses. And it came really fast. Um, I suddenly realized, well, wait a minute, the buses are supposed to have the road, and I should really just step aside. And anyway, um, they're bringing a lot of tourists to the peninsula, people from other countries, people who are maybe um, not able to get out very much from the Bay Area, and who are having this marvelous experience of sharing this environment that I love so much that I live in. And most bus drivers are really uh, very good drivers, and you know you don't see in the papers every day that they're running into people. See, I'm glad you brought up the subject of buses earlier. This raised the whole memory for me. And I began to really appreciate that the buses were there. They bring money into our economy, and I just sort of went through all the great things. And I finally said to myself, you know, on the next bus that I encounter, I'm going to step aside, and I'm going to give a really friendly wave to the bus driver. Just look him right in the eye and give him a big friendly wave. That was about three years ago, and I have not encountered a bus since. Now, we have a story for you. <laughs> so Jerry and Esther have been walking in a particular park, and they, they drive up the hill to where they park, and then they walk for half an hour. And there are many people walking and running on this road like you who make it difficult for them to move their car up this winding road <laughs> and sometimes they have to really get into the oncoming lane in order to get past the people who often don't seem to be aware of them at all and Jerry I signs that say don't walk on that side <laughs> and there are signs that say don't walk on that side and so Jerry has been saying to Esther toot your horn and Esther says I cannot toot my horn I really don't like it when people honk at me and I just cannot bring myself to toot and then Jerry will say all right then just sit here and follow this person up the hill or or get out into the to the oncoming lane it's been a sort of bone of contention with the two of them so Esther <laughs> Esther bought a little bicycle bell <laughs> so now they're traveling on their first day up the hill with the bicycle bell no one no one for them to ring it out <laughs> up the hill down the hill all week long and they came to this powerful conclusion and you've come to it too and here it is when you find the solution and line up with it 
the problem disappears. Just so. You can apply this to anything. In other words, once you, once you find a solution, then the solution resolves your energy and the problem cannot come to you because you are a vibrational the bell call the bell was a symbol but it actually caused them to be a vibrational match to the solution and right. you cannot be a vibrational match to a solution and a problem at the same time and that was the wonderful lesson i learned out of all that and it's been three four years running it's amazing how effective well jerry and esther have decided that they're going to apply that to everything because for every problem there is a solution and the faster that they find it in other words but what but mo what most people don't realize that you discovered in your beautiful acknowledgement and jerry and esther discovered just this week in the in the same way is that when the when you find the solution that you're looking for is not in the behavior of the bus or not in the behavior of the the, the solution you're searching for is in your own vibrational alignment and once you find that solution the entire universe must cooperate to, with you it's glorious it is glorious and now so the question i want to ask is uh, something that happened while i was running um recently it was just a few weeks ago and what came into my awareness as I was running was every single person that I was passing, oh, that one has a focus, of that one has a vortex of creation. That one does too. So does that one, so does that one. Now, I'm a somewhat friendly runner. I don't go up to people as I'm running and yell hi at them. But if they look at me, I sit in the, I'll give them a wave or something like that. As I was doing that and I was running, at least three or four people looked me straight in the eye and went, hi. What's going on with that? How, tell me. <laughs> I wasn't looking, I wasn't feeling for what was going on inside those things. I wasn't trying to be, you know, interpreting that anyway. It was just like me acknowledging everybody around me has hear that the word. vortex hear of creation. The, hear those words. Yes. Me acknowledging. In other words, this is what we're talking about, milking the vortex. When you are in the vortex and you are acknowledging that you're in the vortex and then you're inspired to a behavior from inside the vortex, you rendezvous with those who are ready for you and you for them. It is co-creation at its best. So it's that of the buses. Take your choice. <laughs> Precisely. Precisely. Thank you so much. Indeed. It's all unfolding so perfectly.